few key points of working with um, somebody who's self-harming. The first thing I would say is that the way that I have come to understand self-harm is that uh, although self-injury can be something that can be quite difficult to relate to, actually the mechanism of self-harming is something that's common to all of us. So I would argue that there's a continuum um, of self-harm. And on the beginning of the continuum are behaviours like smoking, drinking too much alcohol, uh, negative self-talk, uh, spending money we haven't got, um, gambling, being promiscuous in a way that's harmful to ourselves. All those kind of behaviours that when we're under a lot of stress, we feel compelled to do even when we know it's going to harm us. And I would argue that actually we're all on that continuum. And depending on how much stress we have in our lives, our behaviour can become more and more and more self-harming, right up to the point where actually we're so overwhelmed with stress that we might resort to self-injury. And I talk about in my workshop the purpose of self-injury and um, the hormone release that comes with that that can actually be incredibly soothing, as can all of these uh, slightly destructive, going up to more destructive behaviours, that they release chemicals in our body which make us feel better in the moment. So I think that's a key point um, around working with people that are self-injuring in that um, if you understand we're actually on that continuum and that you yourself are using behaviours to self-medicate, it can help enormously with being empathic. So understanding that actually in you know, most cases, self-injury isn't about a su failed suicide attempt. It's often, or, or I would say, you know, most of the time, about trying to cope in the moment, trying to get through the moment, releasing something in the body which helps you get through that moment. So empathy is a really, really key point um, and goes very much hand in hand with being non-judgmental. So although as parents particularly, if we find out our child is self-injuring, our instinct is to tell someone to stop, um, maybe even be slightly punitive about that, you know, if you self-injure again, this is going to happen. Um, all of those responses are of course completely natural, but come across to that um, person, often young person, as being punitive, as being um, critical, uh, not showing understanding and empathy. and. Really, the final key point I'd like to say, which I talk a lot more about in, in the training day, is listening. Uh, often people will say to me, um, you know, what, what's the key point to take away? And I would say one of the key things when someone, particularly on the, on the first disclosure of self-injury, when someone has the courage to talk about what's happening for them, that we don't jump in with suggestions, we don't try and problem solve, which is, you know, brief solution focused therapists is difficult because that's what we're geared up to do. But actually, the most important thing at that point is just to say, tell me some more about that. How are you feeling? What's led up to that for you? Just really uh, gentle, open, prompting questions that demonstrate um, compassion, understanding, um, open curiosity, really working alongside that person to work out what's going on underneath the self-harming behaviour. Self-harm isn't a condition, it's a symptom of um, something not working in somebody's life. Emotional needs aren't met, and that's where our focus would go on to, and that's the kind of journey that I'll that I take you through on on the training day.